thank you everyone for coming. Uh, hello. The Esperanto is, uh, I can probably say it's passion because I, I always wanted to, to learn it, but only about one year ago I found actually how to start. I was somehow triggered by external event. But okay, let's start. So what, what is Esperanto? Esperanto is a constructed language. It was uh, designed by a single person, uh, Ludwig Zemenhof, in the late 19th century. And uh, it has a purpose of uniting people and uh, letting them intercommunicate freely on uh, common grounds where no, nobody gets an advantage. And uh, what's interesting, like in, in contrast to, say, uh, Tolkien, Zemenhof is not a linguist. He is uh, just uh, uh, just okay. He is an optician, so he, he is eyes doctor. But he was very good with languages. He knew something like ten of them with or five like good level and another five uh, less uh, than expert. But he was very good at languages, and uh, he was, uh, as he said himself, from his childhood, he was tortured by the idea that people are divided by languages. And his uh, town when, where he lived in Prague, there were four ethnic groups, Germans, Russians, Jews, and uh, Poland, uh, Polish people. Um, and uh, every member of each community considered everyone else to be animals. And uh, that was just intolerable. And uh, Ludwig promised to himself that when he grew, grew up, grows up, he fixes that problem. <laughs> That's uh, how he approached So the history. Uh, he started working on it very early, in the 70s of 19th century. So he was, I don't know, like 12, 14 years old at that time. Uh, by 1878, he was saying that the language is almost there. It's mostly finished. It's good. But as he was very young, at the time he was only 19, I think, um, and uh, he, he had problems publishing a book. That, that was not very possible, which turned around to be a really good thing, because one year later, Volapük had started. Volapük was the first constructed language. As from it lit, uh, it was glowing very brightly for few years, but it was a disaster. Um, for example, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, in in five or six years after announcement, uh, Bloodbook uh, had first conference. People came to it, and it was immediately obvious that nobody speaks it. People were devoting like five years or six years to, to just learn Bloodbook. Nobody can speak it. It was it was very flexible. If if there is a definition for flexibility, that's Bloodbook. It's Every word has every possible like, declinations, flexing. Every single verb had more than half, one and half thousand forms. <laughs> Most of them were optional, but it, it added up. So, uh, Tsemenkov learned on the mistakes of Volopik. And uh, so, uh, while Esperanto was still in works, uh, Volopik forked, but eventually it went into just history. So in 1887, uh, the first book called First Book of Nuovo Libro was published. Uh, it was the like, alpha version of Esperanto. It was very similar to what it is now, but uh, there was still some changes afterwards. Uh, in the, how much, in seven years, there was first conference where people were actually conversing in Esperanto. Uh, next year, the conference uh, was um, converted to actual annual, annual congress, and it was held every year since then, except for two old wars. Uh, in the same year, there was um, a book published. It was called Fundamento de Esperanto, the Fundament of Esperanto. And it was declared that from this point on, the language does not change. So the language we know as of now is the language was published in this book. And uh, the purpose of it is to ease the learning and to, to not let different communities drift apart. 
1919, there was a proposal in League of Nations to make the Esperanto language of scientific community. There was 10 voices for, one voice against. The voice against was by French representative, and French was losing the status of international language. At this time, the English was winning, and they were not very happy about it. But anyway, in two years, they decided, OK, let's go. And it was uh, recommended there were actually scientific papers published in Esperanto at that time. And uh, the growth was very significant. Uh, in overall, the end of 18th century, especially, it was the time of scientific breakthroughs, and people were extremely excited about the bright new future that awaits them. And the people joining together, coming on common grounds on a single language, which is scientifically designed, was very natural. However, the First and Second World Wars didn't really show that people uh, tend to unite. Also, uh, many countries, especially Germany and Russia, were specifically hunting Esperantists. They were declared like spies of uh, of uh, international spy network that are uh, fighting against the regime. And it was like a red label. You you speak Esperanto, let's, let's kill you. And the Cold War is also not much contributed to it. But uh, and, uh, still, so, since end of uh, 20th century, it's growing again. At the moment, there are like, the estimates are very vague because it's hard to estimate uh, speakers where not single nation speaks it. Uh, the, the estimates are about like a thousand people for whom the language is native. So it's uh, usually it's either father uh, which decides to speak Esperanto to a child or just a <coughs> couple which speak Esperanto to each other and the child also starts speaking it. Uh, and uh, there are like 10,000 people who speak it really good, 100,000 people who, who which more or less speak it and like millions of people who actually tried learning it. Yeah, that's that already, I already said. Alphabet. It contains, uh, it's a legend, obviously. Uh, it uh, contains 28 letters, five, I think, vowels, and uh, five letters have uh, diacritics. What's interesting, Volopik was heavily criticized for having umlauts. Uh, Esperanto has even more of them. It not, not, doesn't seem to be a problem. Uh, the, in Android keyboard, the kh sound uh, is on, like, you need to long press. But it's there are like maybe a dozen of words that actually have it, so yeah, it's it's not a problem. And uh, they support swipe to to, to input since a few months, which is nice. Uh, the writing is phonetic. There is a one-to-one -one mapping between uh, sounds and uh, let, uh, letters. If it's spelled correctly, you can pronounce it correctly. If it's pronounced correctly, you can spell it down correctly. Um, the sounds put apart in uh, such a way that uh, accent doesn't really matter. Uh, it's uh, explicitly said that it's fine if you speak Esperanto with accent. The only uh, thing you have to do is to make sounds correctly. Though for some people, certain sounds make problems. Like for me, distinguishing between W and U is sometimes a problem. Some people uh, confuse H and H. It's, it's, it's like English H and the Russian H sound. I, I think the H sound, H, H is pronounced. H sound is close to what um, uh, Swiss people use in like H. That's, that's probably it. Accent, like, I speak in English with a Russian accent. So what do you mean that the sounds are registered so that they are... So it's easier to tell them apart. When somebody says you, you hear what is the sound, even if the person has some accent. OK, so uh, and just uh, every letter reads as you probably can expect it, except for, so, so this is C, as in uh, pizza, or Russian tzapla. But this is Ch, Sh, J, and W. So all sounds are pretty much familiar. And yeah. Ah, zh. That's zh sound. 
Okay, and in in the book I, I was reading, there was actually definition for each sound where you have to put the the tongue, where how to open the mouth, where, how how to configure yourself to, to pronounce it. Dictionary. What is in the dictionary? Most of the ah, okay, the size of the dictionary first. In the very first, like in Umu Libra, there was less than a thousand roots. It's a, in Esperanto, it's measured by roots, not by words, because each root can produce every possible part of speech, like noun, verb, adjective, adverb, whatever. As long as it makes sense, of course. In the, the when Esperanto was frozen at the first Congress, uh, there was almost three thousand words. Uh, two more thousand words were added over the last century. Uh, in comparison, oh, okay, not, not words, roots. In comparison, uh, this is the data I, I dig from somewhere, dug from somewhere. Like native English four year old operates about 5,000 words, and adult operates like 20 to 25,000, depending on how, how educated the person is. So, obviously, it's easy to learn if. There are less words in the in the language. So the the roots themselves. The roots uh, were chosen from different languages. I think there was French and uh, German as uh, primary goals. French obviously because it was an international language, and German probably was considered to be next good candidate. Uh, with English and and uh, with several other languages in a control group, and uh, the. The roots were chosen in the in the way that the more languages contain this root, the more likely it will get into the language. Uh, obviously, not with uh, every root it's possible. So here, for instance, so freeze is a root. So frizo would be freezer. Freezy would be to, uh, to to work on somebody's hair, and so on. Ah, so, so in Russian, it, the translation says to comp, so to, to use the comp. Um, sometimes uh, root contain, uh, contains uh, reference just to single language, but in this case it's French. So if this is French, German, no, English, German, Russian, Polish. Yes. Thank you. Um, so this is an example of just a German uh, root. This is... Uh, this is very, very close to Russian Khvost, so only one sound is missing, and one extra added at the end. And this is a anaso duck. This is this comes from Latin actually. Here are some so more uh, of the roots. It says in the uh, title, and here are some more examples. In other roots, I put something, but frankly, every all of the three. Seem, seem very Russian to me. Small words. Uh, in Esperanto, there are two kinds of words: <laughs> words which uh, which declared as roots, and words which declared as words already, like or almost prescal. That would be a small word. So they are written without this uh, apostrophe at the end, which means that they are complete words. Still people can use them as roots. So you can add endings and uh, produce uh, new words out of them. For example, post, which means behind. If you say poste, which is a pronoun, which mean it would be it would mean later. Uh, words put, put together. Kun means together, meta means to put, and aj means uh, product. So, lamo means a uh, man who who, who can who, who lives basically. A lamba stoner is, is a device that helps such person walk. Cortano means the <coughs> The, the curtain, flank curtain means the curtain, curtain which is to the side, gardine uh, in, in, in German apparently. Mm -hmm. Suffixes and prefixes uh, are the real power of Esperanto. 
when you harness the power of suffixes, you, you'd really see how powerful the language is. For example, the suffix "-aj", means product. So, bovo is a cow, or bovajo is beef. An means member. Regno means the state, the, uh, yeah, the, the country. Regnano is a citizen. Ar, collection. Arbo, one tree. Arbar, forest. Id, descendant. So, bovo is a cow. Bovido would be cow. And bovidajo would be meat of cow. Though, bovajido would mean a descendant of beef. Which is like zombie? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Uh, mal negation. So dextra right, mal dextra left. And basically anything can be negated. It's so uh, mean sweet? No, dextra is right. Mal dextra left. Sweet will be dolce, and mild, mild dolce is really not sweet. I don't know. Sour? Don't know. Uh, so this means uh, like to dissect in small pieces to to, to fall apart vasta means uh, big uh, waste uh, lands so big lands this was to spread so you you put something into little little pieces and distribute it to big territory and ig suffix means to to make something so if i say i i table it's me movas last session. If I can please move for me. Me movigis last session. I made it move, but but uh, I did not move it myself. And uh, if I push it and it keeps uh, sliding, then whatever movijas, it's moving by itself. <coughs> so suffixes and prefixes, affixes, uh, they can be used by themselves. So for instance, uh, Add is a suffix which makes things smaller. It's like, uh, I don't know, sejo is a, uh, is a chair. Sejeto would be small chair. Sejego would be a really huge one. But you can just take a suffix and add it. So a means adjective. Eta, small. Ega would be huge. Uh, and are two suffixes together. An is a member. R is collection. So this is like a troop. Uh, that I always provided, Bobby Dajon. Yes, yes means yes. It's, uh, as in English. Yes, it is to confirm. So you make something, yes. Dowry. Dowry uh, means to, to continue, dowry to extend, to make it longer. Rompi to break, mal rompi to fix. Table, word, uh, table words. Those are in other marvel. There are five prefixes and ten different endings, and you can combine them in any possible way. Key means uh, question. T means like this. E means uh, some unknown. Nani known and chi all. So the question kio what? The answer is like tio that or chi tio like this specific one. Q, who, nenu, no one. Q, how much? E all, some amount. So those five and those uh, ten combine in any possible combinations. You can just take any of them and uh, take any of other, yeah, and yeah, you will get a word. Suffix. <coughs> you didn't go to the suffix. suffix? Ah, yes, I did not uh, go to the suffix. Suffixes. Who means person? O means object. A means quality, as in adjectives. Uh, A means time, O means quantity, place, direction, uh, reason, method of doing, and uh, possession. Who, whose is that? So key S is who, whose? Miss. Mine. Is it in, as it's in Switzerland? No, Mia. <laughs> no. Uh, and the last example, Kia where? Everywhere. Answer. So how does look? Uh, how does this product text look like? Uh, here are two small texts. One is in English. It goes. I did not read it. It's about the uh, China and dragons. It's several lines. 
and Esperanto is somewhat smaller because of uh, I think this is because exactly of those suffixes you add uh, the words mean more so it's about 10 percent smaller I I did the same uh, similar comparison on the uh, Volopuk and it was 30 percent smaller because of even more uh, information density sound wave Chi ha viaggiato patro e decidi di istruirvi a Esperanto? Chi ha viaggiato patro e raccontigi per Esperanto che hai ricevuto parole di Esperanto in cune, che hai mi audiste Esperanto e amico e che tu podo mi audiste lingua circa mi, che è tiel mi lernis. Mia patrina è stas uh, Ungara, mia patro Franza, e li raccontigi su Esperanto, raccontigi in Esperanto congresso, che li pensi che uno è Esperanto che posta mi ha posto tempo in uh, lerni mia in alia in lingua in anca. So to, to some people, um, this uh, sound as not their language, but th they know that this is probably this one. Uh, in the, during the Second World War, in concentration camps, the prisoners were actually teaching each other Esperanto, and they, they were telling to Germans that they teach in Italian. And the personal tradition was accepted. I tried using it in Italy, like, du glasso de vino, bon volu, they understand. They, th they think it's Spanish. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it, it works. The parts of the speech. So verbs have the most uh, endings. Uh, there is a, so E means indefinite form, U means volity. So it's like imaginary situation, but you actually actively want this to happen and uh, is past as present or future so me more was that schedule means that i will move it us is just imaginary situation hey, what if all nouns end in or uh, there are additional so it, it can end in oi if it's plural or oin if it's accusative there are two cases nominative and accusative Adjectives and in R and and so on. There are so so many participles, so passive and active, which uh, many of them don't have direct translations in, into natural languages. They were very easy to add, but uh, like passive future participle, I think don't really exist in natural languages. Oh, maybe I just don't know the and suffix. Ant means uh, the person, uh, not person, person is cool. Uh, Ant means uh, actively happening. Esperi means to hope. So esper, ant, o means the, some, someone who hopes. That was a, a pseudonym of uh, Tsenenhof, and uh, it was uh, transferred to, to the name of the language. Uh, okay, and yes, there are affixes, uh, plurality, and case. Why is it easy to, to learn? The primary reason is that there are 16 rules and exactly zero exceptions. The most of the time, I don't know, maybe 50 to 80 percent of the time when you learn natural language, you spend learning exceptions. Here all this time is removed. Uh, the structure is very regular. If you think that this can probably put to, be put together, that's right, it can be put together, as long as you can make sense out of, out of it. And uh, obviously the roots were carefully picked from different languages so that it's easier to memorize roots. Critics. There are some critics of Esperanto. Uh, uh, I found this article, it's in Italian, but the Google Translate does a really good job. Um, there are like opponent, proponent, and the scientific approach. Basically, out of the whole list, the only one uh, is uh, really acknowledged, like, yes, this is there, which is uh, the suffix in, which means feminine, viro, man, virino, woman. And uh, people say, like, look, this is not balanced. This is, like, this is 19th century. It is, like, as balanced as you can think. This is, the, the imbalance is not in the language. It's in people's heads. 
as as soon as you understand that this is actually adds more than it takes away, it's it's really not a problem. It's just a tool. Uh, yeah, so feel free to, to read more. So the example of understanding, this is my own experience. I learned really intensively over December and January. Then I figured out that my German really suffers. So I <laughs> promised to myself to not do anything about Esperanto. So I spent six months just German, uh, learning, studying German. And then I started again, like, like leading maybe. And here is some example. I marked the words that were not clear to me at the time. <laughs> So not, not clear means that I wasn't 100% sure that I understood them. Some of, I did not understand some, some were kind of uh, understandable from context. So that's how much you can basically understand after two months of studying language. Here's poetry. It's almost all right. What other languages is it? I know Russian, I know English, and uh, I had to study German. It's very regular. I am not ready to answer this. I, I don't know. I, I know that there was a primary group of languages and a control group where uh, for, for picking up the roots. I know that um, certain things that uh, are more or less easy to learn would be picked from some language like the uh, uh, definite article la and indefinite article which is absence of the article was taken from Hebrew the um, flexing or like combining of uh, roots and the uh, affixes were taken from most Slavic languages where they proven really to, to be really powerful uh, the um, verbs that uh, not changing like with first second third person was taken from English and so on so it was I, I know how scientific is that, actually, frankly. But uh, it was uh, carefully studied what, what pieces of the language, uh, of different languages, make it for them easy to learn. And that was brought in. Yes? For instance, how, uh, how many years every, was every uh, natural language changed a little because of new discovered science? Yes. Words. Over 100 words, it drifted away. How about uh, Esperanto? Esperanto is frozen it's frozen by decree it does not change which makes it actually fun to learn because uh at least for me i use the um, dictionary that was published in uh, 1905 and uh, i can see actually the meaning why the this specific russian word means this now like why is it used because there it has different meaning but it is clear how it is transitioned so from uh, studying of history perspective, it, it actually brings more. And uh, most likely it, it does the same job for other languages, uh, other five that are, that are in uh, in the Detroit. talk about software. Software? Yeah. So what's about software? So they yeah. talk about it. It means there are new words. Oh, in yes. Uh, so uh, there, there was a slide that they added more than 2,000 yeah, words. Yeah. Uh, so uh, from time to time, it's like once in 10, 15 years, uh, addition came to, uh, is printed. So like that here are new words that we agreed that everybody uses. So they just uh, confirm that, yes, those words are already used. We not, don't just use them. It, it's it's a matter of fact. Those words are roots. So roots, roots, yes. I, I keep saying words, but I mean roots. Oh. The geographical people are not clustered. It was somewhat true uh, before First World War. There was a small triangle, I don't know, like two square kilometers, which was declared, declared to be a separate country, and Esperanto was an official language of it. 
And even when the First World War started, the, the troops actually went around it for some time, but at the end it was just claimed, okay, this is, I don't know, fiction or something. This is our now, and no more of this country anymore. Okay, so why, why study? The biggest, I think, at least for me, the biggest reason is that it is just fun. It's uh, so rewarding. When you study a language, like I had to study German, and you, you study the language, you, you understand that you make progress. It makes you feel good. Here you then they get, here you get exactly the same thing for like one tenth of a price. One month of Esperanto is like one year of national language study. This is uh, it, it just worth it. it. It's the same reason why people play computer games, just for to have fun. But if it, that's not enough, there are some smaller things. So uh, there were some experiments and which show uh, that studying Esperanto first, uh, easiest study of other language. Uh, there will be some data later on it. Uh, as I already said, uh, as other languages drifted away. But you uh, use the old dictionary. You can use a, a new dictionary as well. They, they are available. But uh, you can see the history of the language, of your own language, or, or, of other languages, how they uh, drifted. For example, English uh, to browse means to make noise. To make noise. I don't quite see the, like For this particular case, I don't see what, where is the bridge. There was probably some intermediate point which I don't see. But the the the, the meanings uh, mostly unchanged. Economics. There were some studies uh, that uh, for Europe, Europe, the, hmm, I'm over time, that's bad. In Europe, uh, there is a huge economic losses because uh, English is international language and people have to study it and translate everything and it benefits English speaking community more than it uh, benefits Europe. So there are some proposals to make it uh, international language. You can brag that this is one more language, you know. And yes, it helps you to communicate. Uh, you get understanding of languages that you don't normally know. So this is some research. In Germany, they uh, did uh, they took a group of French uh, students and compared how uh, Esperanto compares to, to other languages. Given the numbers, I think it's something like A1 level, maybe A2. But yeah, Esperanto is great, so you can get the certificate. Another study, which is, um, so yes, learning one year Esperanto and then learning, learning French uh, versus four years French gives better results. And uh, another uh, observation was on a, on a kid, which was, uh, I think, approximately the same. Two years Esperanto, three years French, and she ended up with better French than her um, peers, or age peers. So myths, Esperanto is dead. It's not dead. It was almost killed during World Wars, but no, it isn't. Far from it. It failed to achieve its goals. The goals were claimed to be like, everybody involved uses it. Oh, like, at least as as far as the follow up. It didn't fail because there was explicitly said it, it might take several centuries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just only this, right? This is just like, it's, I, I don't know how the person come to the idea, but uh, it's, it's so regular. It's very geared to the people of European it See, takes a lot of roots from European languages. However, it's most popular in Europe and Asia. It's also a matter of most, but I'm saying also this idea of using suffix and suffix. Uh, in Europe, it's European languages very common, but I don't think European languages don't use suffix and suffix. Yes, it, it, it has certain bias towards European languages, that's true. And I, I heard even uh, yet another very peculiar uh, myth that there is a community if you want like to learn paraglider and want to find a really good instructor, you can go and look in a the community. I, I, I don't know why this can be. 
could be, maybe I would on the basis. Okay, and how? <coughs> Duolingo. That's how I learned it. It's there. It's really good. Uh, if you want to get grammar, there. It uh, gives you everything. Uh, also, the Lego, which is uh, which means go learn. Uh, it's older resource and it has really a lot of materials. Thanks. Thank you. How many? How many Googlers take this graph? In Zurich, there are three Googlers who have this page. <laughs> <laughs> I think them. Uh, I mean, uh, me and two more. I think the two more they did not respond yet. <laughs> do, you, do you ever speak it out loud, or is it is your practice mostly in reading and? Writing? My practice is mostly in reading and sometimes writing. I'm trying to find a peer in la on language exchange so that we can like chat over Skype, but uh, it's the density of speakers is low. Have you looked at other constructed languages like Ido or Kingo? No. No, I did not. I know that Ido is descendant of Esperanto. Id means descendant, so Ido is a descendant. I don't know what's inside it and what have changed. Is the language growing in number of water than changes so uh, if you mean the number of participants yeah so yes it is growing uh, it, again it's hard to measure but for instance on the Duolingo there are like uh, 150 uh, 150,000 people who study in the course and like about uh, 30 or 50 graduating every day so there is obviously some progress with it, but it, again, how to measure? So, where do you use the language? Do you, do you have like websites that you go read, or just books, or do you? Do you I have them? books. Uh, yeah, you, you can take a look if you want. Uh, I uh, don't really use it. I study it. That's the part that is fun. Do you think? I mean, normally we learn languages to communicate. This, do you estimate you use it? It's close to zero, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's especially close to zero because it might happen that you meet somebody who speaks it, but you won't know about it because it's usually not the first thing you announce. Has to wear a T-shirt. <laughs> 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 yes, there is Wikipedia. Volapük is bigger though, uh, but. Most of like 99 point something articles uh, in Volpe created by bots, and all bots are written by a single person. Yes? Um, you mentioned the use of Esperanto in design. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, um, you know, in depth for a scientific paper, it's very important to be precise, and it's apparently easier in English than in German. How do you feel this is in, in Esperanto? Is it easy to be precise in the language? I think it is easier. I cannot just uh, say for hundred percent, but that's my feeling because the boundaries between uh, word meanings they are much more pronounced, and uh, it is easier to 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 say what's uh, what exactly and stay no, no, not vague. I actually have uh, an impression that Esperanto is more flexible uh, on delivering the uh, meaning than Russian. Which is my native language, so it might be that it is actually more flexible and more precise than any other natural language. I read that um, Esperanto. Part of uh, what he, the creator, wanted was that you could write poetry in the language. Do they rhyme? Like, does yes, the, they do. <laughs> they do. I mean, I know poetry doesn't have to rhyme, but like the kind of like listening to you. <laughs> like, are there songs in Esperanto? Yes, there are songs. I, I haven't listened to them yet, but I know they exist. So let's. I will try. Uh, it would be approximately the same, as bad as I'm reading German. Shinkaptis ne for pelebla neven kebla rivado neatenditai bri. This is not poetry. This is just prose. Because, because, uh, mm. because of the suffix in 
Yeah, the subtext is you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's as long true. as you have the same construction. Though I, I have I heard that poets in Esperanto sometimes try to bend the rules somewhat. <laughs> Slackers. <laughs> So uh, if there is one to one correspondence with uh, sounds and letters. Yes. Uh, how do you know? Uh, is there a way to, or is there a specific way of pronouncing the words in terms of stress? So like which syllable has? Yes, the the the, the <coughs> accent, which is not not uh, in other language accent, but where you put the stress. Yes, it's always the second before last. Okay. Could be the original set of letters and sounds, or was it chosen? Why did it G instead of other sounds? I think that the sounds were chosen so that people are more or less comfortable with the, the set of sounds. And uh, also, the, the primary reason was to put, the, put them apart so that it's easier to recognize. Yes, that could be as well. Though, uh, when roots were trans transferred from other languages, sometimes the pronunciation was preserved, sometimes the spelling was preserved. It's, it varies. And it is actually easier to learn if spelling is preserved. I mean, pronunciation, pronunciation is different. So, um, for example, was designed in such a way that given or given stream of sounds, there is one unique way to split it into words. Is it also the case, or at least more or less the case in Esperanto? It's more or less the case, yes. Uh, it's uh, When I was marking those words, sometimes I was marking just a part of the word, like here, kreigis. It's it's clear that it's krei, and ij is just inserted into it. And s is, so this is verb in past, which is something happening to itself. and. Uh, Cree, cree is as I know now, this is to create. So this is creates itself like a pierce, maybe. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.